Okay, well, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to our next webinar in preparation for the Datathon next week. Uh, everyone is in listen only mode, uh, and uh, just uh, quickly some of the logistics. This is a Citrix go to webinar. Uh, if you have a question or a problem, uh, you can have you can open up your control panel and either raise your hand or type question in the question window. Uh, I will stay here and, and uh, be available throughout and be monitoring this, and uh, I will let you know uh, any information that you need, um, and I will pass the questions then on to the speakers. Uh, this is the third in our set of four um, webinars that we're having this week. Uh, the uh, earlier two, uh, this, a special training class uh, on the Transmore Foundation, and uh, a description of what the Datathon is about and how it's going to uh, take take place and uh, the logistics uh, was presented yesterday by Keith Elliston and Ken Kubota. Uh, both of these were recorded and are available on our website to view right now. Uh, this session today is also being recorded and it will be available uh, hopefully later today. So today's session, uh, is coming to us from the University of Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine, uh, where we're going to hear about uh, their research programs uh, on Parkinson's disease uh, and hear about some special data sets and tools that they have created uh, at the center. So I'd like to introduce the first speaker, um, Wei Gu from uh, the University of Luxembourg, uh, and I'll pass the control over to him. Wei, let's see. Can you hear me? Yes, that's good. Okay, you should be able to take control now. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Uh, yes, looks good. All right. Um, okay. So I, I will talk about uh, the uh, data set first. I, I, I think Fankata will talk about more the research part of how to link um, Transmart with other tools. Um, actually, there's 10 data sets for Parkinson-related disease studies um, contributed uh, also in terms of the Etrix consortium, because we are part of the Etrix project. Um, maybe I, I just start with some background about Etrix, like why, why we curate data uh, for Transmart, and um, so, the, so that you an, an better understand um, the, the scenarios here. So Etrix is um, is an, an European project um, founded by the by the Innovative Medicine Initiative. Uh, aiming at um, providing better um, patient treatment uh, by putting public institute and um, your uh, pharmaceutical industry together. And Etrix is one of the project I mean, is funding, but this is, this is kind of a special project or what we call it umbrella project to to support other real research project on how to manage data knowledge. And uh, the IMI uh, um, per, uh, initiative is the largest um, public-private partnership in Europe. Has a quite a decent um, budget. Of um, so far, has already funded more than 50 projects, and aim to fund another 40 to 50 projects on different disease areas. And this budget is halfly paid by European Union, halfly income treat uh, in income contribution, or 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 other types of uh, funding from the. European Pharmaceutical Industry Association. And uh, in the Etrix Consortium, um, uh, as you see, there's the, all, the, all the partners in this project. And uh, University of Luxembourg, we are in charge of the data curation and also providing an electric tools, especially linked to, to Transmart. Um, so, so, so Etrix is supporting other IMAG projects. When the project's coming, they, they have different type of requests. For example, they want Transmart host, hosting server or they, they want to um, 
they want eTrix to, to support them on, on data curation on their own data set, or they can also request um, any available um, public data set that is related to the disease they are targeting to be curated, or they want to have trainings on users or, or, or curation, curators. So the data set we are going to talk about this time is mostly the, 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 um, the public data set, which we um, curated for the team project, and now is there available on the, on the public server of Etrix. And here are some, some um, details of the server. So the Etrix public server is running the latest version of Transmart and has been hosted by, by the Etrix um, hosting facilities at Threesight, mainly at Lyon and uh, Mira in London and Luxembourg. Um, so far, until the end of February this year, we have loaded 65 studies covering more than eight disease areas. And the aim of the project of Etrix is to provide more disease areas and at least 100 studies loaded to the public server. And so far, we have all the studies has in, in, in total about 7,000 subjects and more than 30 um, microarray platform loaded to the server. And we have um, um, extract data from, from mainly from GEO, TCGA, and the uh, cancer cell line and Encyclopedia and GSK cell lines. And you get a link here uh, of how to access the public server matrix. So, so in, in terms of the, the data and stuff, we, uh, we loaded um, 10 PD related studies. They are mostly coming from the GEO uh, website, uh, encompass of about 400 subjects and four different uh, transcriptome platforms. So here I will talk about some more details on, on, on the curation of the geo studies, especially for the PD studies that, um, you know, I think everyone who, who curate data from geo has facing the same challenge that uh, there are some, some inconsistencies of, of the data source. For example, the phenotypic data are typically not always um, available on the, on the place where it should be. For example, on the left side, you see there's a good example of where data should be provided. And you have the disease state, age, gender, whatever, with key and value pairs. But on the, on the right side, this is also the reality you have, you're going to face that people don't put the data actually in the tag. They put, for example, the control information in the title of the sample rather in the, in the characteristics. And this needs a lot, lot of hand tuning and hand validation manual uh, curation steps. Um, also, uh, beyond the uh, phenotypic data or clinical data during the curation of the array data, uh, we also facing the challenge that um, if different data sets upload different type of data, sometimes load in intensity, sometimes transform the data, um, which is okay, we, 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 we can handle this um, with pipeline, automatic pipeline, but sometimes there's tricky parts where people actually load mixture data for the same data set. And this you need um, very, very much uh, manual validations. Also, in different studies, all the terms uh, loaded, uh, they use different uh, vocabularies. For example, gender, you will find uh, more than 10 different uh, notions they use. And even for Parkinson's disease and control, you will see they use different spellings and, and you know with Transmart, uh, this has to be all unified. Um, furthermore, for the, for the annotation data, um, many of the platform, the annotation is not is incomplete and we have to do some um, um, populate, populate this an annotation um, data as well. And in-house we, uh, we have a data curation pipeline. Uh, this is semi-automatic. Um, on the left side, is the automatic part where we, we download data from the, from the GEO website and uh, from the, uh, and then we parse the XML file to get all the information, met metadata, clinical data, and expression annotation as well. From, from there, uh, we generate the standard uh, format file where you can load it to, to Transmart. But before that, of course, we have to go through all the files and to, to check the quality and if the information are complete and consistent, um, which is the manual validation step. Then, then we will load the data. Now, all these 10 studies 
of PD related uh, geo studies are available at the Loni server for the data fan. Here's just a screenshot that uh, we, we have tried also to, to run some analysis on the curated data, as you see from GSC 2000, uh, 20, um you can you can nicely use the uh, advanced workflow to, to run market selection on them. And yeah, I'm done actually. So uh, I would like to thank all my colleagues in Luxembourg and the other colleagues in Etrix and uh, the funding agencies, especially Transmart Foundation, to pr provide traveling uh, fund for us. So I'm done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Then uh, Kata, I will turn the presentation over to you now. And you need to unmute yourself, I think. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Great, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, everyone. My name is Venkata Sadegopam. I am also from uh, University of Luxembourg. And apart from uh, uh, my activities in bioinformatics, I'm involved in the eTrix project as well, especially in the data curation and uh, analytics. So for today, I will uh, mainly focus on connect how we're going to connect transport to the manually curated PD disease model. Uh, here, uh, this is the scheme, schematic representation and the previous webinars we, we have seen uh, uh, from Thomson Reuters, they presented with the functionality of the Transmart. And then we can, in the eTrix, we have developed a plugin uh, to, to run the workflows in the Galaxy so, and then at the University of Luxembourg, we have developed the PD map. Uh, then now uh, we'll, I would like to go through some slides uh, around this connection, and then I will give a, a live demo how uh, the, to connecting these three uh, different systems. So, uh, for, yeah, the, by this time now we know how we we can do the slicing and dicing of the data by using the Transmart. Now uh, I will uh, focus on Galaxy a bit. I guess most of you are well aware of Galaxy. It is a open uh, open source web-based workflow engine for data analysis. I'm, currently, people are using to analyze NGS data, microarray data, and etc. And it mainly uh, consists of uh, three important features: one is uh, accessible. Users uh, who doesn't have programming experience can easily uh, use this Galaxy. Uh, they have to specify the parameters to run a particular workflow. And uh, these, these Galaxy workflows are reproducible. I mean, it, Galaxy captures the information so that any user can repeat the complete analysis. Even uh, if I develop a workflow in Galaxy, I can share with uh, uh, some of our collaborators, and they can they can easily import into the their Galaxy system, and they can run the workflow. And uh, and also, this uh, Galaxy is very transparent. Users can share and publish the analysis workflows via the web. Uh, it, I mean, it is widely used in the community for uh, for the analysis. I mean, we use a lot R. Some some people prefer R. Uh, 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 engine or uh, some people go to the Galaxy. I mean, even in the Galaxy, we can wrap a lot of R code as a kind of wrapper script. And it is a, uh, it, an example workflow how it looks in the Galaxy. 
and you can you can drag and drop the your inputs and outputs and the tools and you can make a, a, a workflow uh, this is one example and in the eTrix uh, framework we have developed a couple of galaxy workflows I mean we have uh, two possibilities one one possibility we can run the advanced workflows within the transmart and the second possibility we can take that we can export the data from the transmart and import into the galaxy and we can run the uh, workflows there I mean there uh, in the in this kind of setup these two systems are mm, uh, not tightly coupled you know like they, we can easily develop new workflows and uh, uh, in our galaxy and can run the analysis so we have developed a couple of uh, workflows in galaxy for many for marker selection uh, analysis for RNA seq RNA uh, transcriptomics arrays methylation array micro RNA seq uh, arrays uh, seq etc and also we we have the marker selection for the uh, GWAS data and VCF and, and some other workflows also under development uh, we are actually pu uh, pushing this effort and then uh, then after uh, you have a workflow in the galaxy you need to uh, select the the parameters like in, the, in this uh, particular example in this screenshot I am showing the selecting two VCF files and then you run your workflow and you get the this kind of results in the galaxy and okay now with this one I will now uh, with, this is a uh, okay this is a uh, galaxy in a very uh, in a nutshell kind of now I will a bit focus on the PD map uh, the Parkinson's disease uh, uh, PD map actually uh, maybe a little bit background Parkinson's disease is a new uh, degenerative disorder of uh, CNS, central nervous system, first described by James Parkinson in 1817. The clinical syndrome of PD is characterized by bradykinesia, resting tremor, rigidity, and uh, postural uh, instability, like the, the shaking and those things. The motor symptoms of PD result from preferentially uh, death of dopaminergic. Uh, dopamine generating neurons in, especially in the uh, substantia Niagara region of the midbrain after manifestation of the motor symptoms more than 50 percent of these dopamine neurons are, are already dead so like whenever when we came to know about the disease diagnosis I mean a lot of damage has been already done in the case of uh, PD subjects medications uh, uh, of these motor symptoms, uh, mainly uh, we are using mainly the levodopa, but I mean, the duration of this uh, disease is not not possible yet. But when Daddy, your audio has cut out. You can't hear me, Rudy? Okay, you're, you're back. It, it cut out for a second. You're okay now. Okay, sorry. And 10% uh, of the, uh, only 10% of the DC, the subjects are, the, they are heredity free. It is, the, it is based on the, some genetic mutations, especially in the genes like alpha synucleosin, LAR2, Parkin, Pink, TJ1, etc. This is a uh, bit background of the Parkinson's disease. And what is the what is our goal here at the University of Luxembourg? Mainly, when we plan to develop this disease map, uh, we want to generate a map of molecular interactions, including metabolic and signaling pathways involved in the pathogenesis and progression of Parkinson's disease. We're mainly focusing on dopaminergic neuron and mechanisms related to the hallmarks of the PD. Here we, uh, in the one of the paper published by uh, the, the LCSB here, is listed the, the the important hallmarks of PD like uh, mitochondrial dysfunction, calcium hemostatis, synaptic dysfunction, lysosome, proteasome, and the neuroinflammation, protein misfolding, apoptosis, and the ROS, etc. So we want to bring all these uh, hallmarks into the PD model. 
and here uh, in a schematic uh, representation this is uh, the paper will be published in 2013 there you can see mainly the mainly the pathways happening in the dopaminergic neuron and also in the microglia and the astrocytes the neuroinflammation neurodegeneration and mitochondrial dysfunction draws and etc and this is the kind of starting point for us to build this model and we went deep into this one and build up this resource now uh, it's, it, it is this map is available uh, from this pdmap.uni.lu uh, it's, uh, it's a freely accessible one and if you look into the different components of the pdmap uh, actually here we are using the cell designer that's coming from uh, SPI uh, Tokyo and SP, SPML system biology markup language SBGN and also like we are annotating all the genes, proteins, chemicals in the map by using the Miriam RDF technology that is from EBI and for the visualization we are using the Google map uh, to visualize the uh, PD map. So then uh, what is the content How from, from where we are uh, the kind of what is the source of the content for the map? Mainly, we are uh, two two sources. We are two main sources. If we can classify one are databases like Keg and Reactome, and the uh, other one is like we are manually reading the literature <coughs> and uh, building this map. Right now, we have uh, 112 genes, 870 proteins and uh, ions, drugs, and etc. I have we have listed here, and the other side uh, mentioned like what are the uh, primary primary keys, like what are the uh, grounding uh, identifiers we are using. I mean we know that we can represent the same genes in by using different identifiers, but for the for other downstream analysis, it will be easier for if we use uh, use some standard uh, IDs we, we classically do in bioinformatics. A current size, uh, it contains uh, uh, roughly 1,600 elements and uh, 1,200 reactions in the map. So then move to the, uh, uh, yeah, this is our, now the PD map is for us a kind of knowledge repository. Here we have, we, have, we curate the literature and integrate the knowledge and we maintain uh, we also get the feedback from the users uh, in, uh, on the map. You can right click, the, you can send a comment if something is wrong or if something is missing. And uh, yeah, the user interface, mm, as I mentioned here. Uh, and this is mainly, I mean, it's meant for uh, PD expert clinicians and, uh, and uh, yes, the researchers working in the field of Parkinson's disease. So now the PD map also provides uh, a couple of tools. There we can uh, we have a map now. It's, it's a kind of knowledge base. But when we do the experimental analysis, we can bring the uh, the experimental results and we can overlay on the PD map. So these are the the list of uh, the data types to be can be visualized on the PD map like transcriptomics, genomics, example, uh, SNPs, etc. Of our proteomics, metabolomics, imaging, and clinical data, etc. And uh, uh, mainly some of the sources for this one we already just now just before mentioned about gene expression omnibus and uh, the in-house experimental data as well. Uh, so so now today the example. The demo I will show exactly the, the GEO study that is coming from the already published literature, and then we, we will try to overlay on the PD map. Okay. So then, okay, this is the the demo I will show in a while. So then I will move to my uh, server here. So here we we set up um, Transmart. Uh, uh, with the Galaxy plugin installed and the Galaxy server, everything was set up. So I will use this uh, this Transmart instance to give a demo. So now I'm connecting to the the uh, Transmart uh, 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 is from our side here, and uh, here I will take a demo project that is a, one of the uh, PD uh, studies. Uh, we, we curated from the gene expression omnibus and uh, 
I mean, you, you all are kind of aware of this interface. And this is the way we do the slicing and dicing of the data. This time, I want to simply compare disease status normal versus PD. And uh, then you can, you can do the summary statistics and quickly see what is happening between the both uh, uh, both co uh, subsets and uh, this is a classical uh, transmart so now in order to you in order to you run the uh, workflows i mean here for example by using the advanced workflows we can run the analysis by using the transmart for example marker selection or etc for 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 this particular demo i would like to export the data and run the uh, marker selection analysis by using the galaxy in order to oh, then Kata, you dropped out again you we don't hear anything Still can't hear you. Uh, can you hear me? By the way? Yes. Yes. You did. Um, maybe maybe Fangata, you can use my computer okay. for for speaking. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll that'll work. Rudy, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? That sounds fine, yes. Sorry. Now now is better? Rudy? Yes, that sounds fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I'm using actually. I know. I different I, computer and I, I got it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you just go back a step, maybe. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. 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 So I mean, in the summary statistics, uh, as I mentioned, like here now we uh, uh, made a uh, two sub cohorts. One is the normal and the PD. Okay. This is the summary statistics page. This is the classical. Uh, transmart functionality. Here, uh, we can by using transmart, we can run the advanced workflows. Okay, here and in this demo, I would like to take the data, but run the workflow in, by using Galaxy. Okay, in order to do that one, you have to export the data, and uh, by using the data export tab. So here now I want to do the differential expression analysis with the Galaxy workflow. So I need to select the microarray data that is related to the the, the selected two subcodes. So if you go down, there will be a uh, then here there will be a button export data. And then it takes a few seconds. It will upload the uh, uh, export the data. Okay. Then here you don't need to download this data. Simply you have uh, one more tab in the uh, one more plugin. I, I would say in the Galaxy. This is the Galaxy export. It was developed in the Heatfix, uh, and this is the the connect connect uh, connecting to the the Galaxy server. Here we are using the very simple uh, Dropbox, Dropbox kind of functionality of the Galaxy. Now I go to the Galaxy, uh, the, the, the top one is not yet exported, is the one currently I have selected in the transmart. Then just give a uh, name, um, T, like TMPD uh, webinar, webinar, uh, demo. Okay, just give a name, any name, doesn't matter. Then if you refresh, it's telling it's done. When you saw this message, this data is already uploaded to the Galaxy server. So now I'm from Transmart to I'm switching to the Galaxy server that is running at uh, University of Luxembourg that is uh, connected to the uh, connected to 
transmart. So here, if you go to the, this is the Galaxy, when you going login, this is the kind of interface you will see here. On the left side, you have the, uh, the tools that are available in your uh, installation, workflows and tools, etc. In the middle, you will see some, uh, some info. On the, on the right side panel, you will see what are the analysis you have done and, and all the history you will see. So now, uh, now I want to pick, pick up the data that, that I have exported from Transmart. If we go, go to the shared data, data libraries, there you will see the data that I have uploaded. This is the one TM PD webinar demo. That's what we have uh, give the name. If you select this one, there, there you should see two uh, subsets that we have uploaded there. Just select, we need to select these two subsets and uh, import into current history. Okay, because we need to, use, we will use these two data sets to run the analysis. So now the two data sets are imported to, you will see the, see the, the MSA two data sets imported into history. So now uh, then I'm moving to the workflow tab in the Galaxy. There I have my workflows are uh, listed there. Today I want to do transmart microarray marker selection work, workflow then connecting to PD map. Okay, then just select the the, the workflow and say run. Okay, then it will open the panel where you can select the different parameters. So now I want to select my two uh, micro uh, micro array data related to the, our two sub cohorts. These are last two files. It's always uh, you will find your know, up, up, uh, uh, exported data in the at the end. So 55 is the subset one and 56 is the subset two. And here you can see all what are the other steps it will do and uh, how many markers you want to see. Okay, default it is five, but I want to change to 50. I want to see top 50 differentially expressed genes between PD and uh, normal, and then just run the workflow. Okay, so when you run and in the, in the right side panel, you can see these are the 55 and 56, these are the two sub cohorts. Now it is uh, output 57, 58, 59. Uh, these are the, uh, now it is, it's run the uh, Lima package in the back end differential expression analysis. And these are the differentially expressed genes you can see. Okay, if you want, you can download, you can feed to some other tool. Uh, and this is, then now, and these are the, uh, I asked the top 50 differential expression genes. This is the typical output from top table uh, from R. So now, I'm, uh, now my goal is now I want to connect, I want to take these genes gene and uh, these differentially expressed. We have some of, some of them are uh, upregulated, some are downregulated. Now I want to overlay this, this uh, information on the PD map, okay? So then, very simply, we, we, we build a connector. Okay, PD map has a, an API. So through an API, you can submit your uh, differentially expressed genes. Okay, now if I can, uh, select, if I just simply click on that link, it, it take me, it bring me to the uh, to the PD map. So you have seen, you seen Google map initially. You see, because we are using the Google map technology. That's why you saw that one. So here uh, you see some of them are green, some of them are red. In, in the PD map uh, uh, notations, the red ones are down regulated and green ones are up regulated. Um, so you can zoom in. It's very, it's very similar to Google uh, technology. You can zoom in, zoom out, and uh, if you want to know more about uh, the gene, sorry. I, um, for example, if the CREB1, if you just, if you click on, uh, uh, then you will see some annotations on your left panel and what is this gene or what is the description is coming from uh, HGNC and uh, cross references to uh, uh, the standard databases and also PubMed IDs from where this information is coming from. And uh, yeah, you can, Zoom in, zoom out, 
and maybe like quickly I will uh, this is the uh, uh, yeah here uh, maybe you can see the legend one is one second if you click on the legend button you can see the the legend here um, and also if you want to as I mentioned before if you want to send a comment if you right click this I remove this legend and uh, you can add a comment and we will receive the that uh, comment Ah. Actually, it should uh, it should work. Yeah, maybe I will I will switch to the standard uh, PD map. Just I want to give a uh, one overview. Then I I, I, will, I will check this uh, comment thing in a while. Uh, the, if you go to the uh, PD map uni dot lu, this is the 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 web interface where this is described. And uh, the PD map access. Uh, if you follow this link, it will bring you to this page. And here, I want to uh, mention one thing. It has like a different compartments. Uh, initially, you can see in the very high level uh, view um, only like you know TC glycolysis, TCGS cycle, apoptosis, and uh, something like that. And now then later you can zoom in. Now right now I selected apoptosis pathway, and you can zoom in and uh, see the information. And uh, okay, oh, this may be the reason. Uh, okay, can I add a comment? Yeah. So I mean, like, if anything, uh, if if some uh, like we want to have the community curation, community involvement as well, and there are a lot of experts in, in the field. If they see something is wrong or something we are missing something, you you can send us a comment, some information, and we will go through these comments and uh, improve the map and add the new content. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is. Uh, um, This is a kind of uh, connecting uh, transmart to Galaxy and Galaxy to the PD map uh, in, in a in a nutshell. And with this with this one, I would like to thank uh, uh, Etrix team uh, who made it this Galaxy plugin uh, po uh, possible, and the uh, my colleague Ismaili from uh, uh, University of Luxembourg and Imperial College London people involved. Would like to thank the Etrix team, and at the same time the PD Map uh, team. Uh, PD Map is a collaboration from University of Luxembourg and uh, uh, Systems Biology Institute uh, Japan uh, with uh, Kitano Hiroyuki and uh, his team. So I would like to thank all the people involved in the PD Map, and uh, also I would like to thank the funding agencies, uh, Etrix uh, and uh, University of Luxembourg. Uh, and also, I would like to thank the Foundation, Asman Foundation, for the travel fellowships to take part in the Datathon. So, if you have any questions for this part, or uh, shall we, or if not, we will, can move to the uh, next talk. I don't see any questions yet. If anyone has any, please raise your hand or enter a question in the question window. Uh, I can unmute you and you can ask it if you like. Okay, I don't see any questions. You want to um, move on to the next portion of the presentation? Sorry, PPTX. Uh, well, hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, my name is uh, Vasco Vrisim. 
Uh, I'm currently finishing my, my master's degree in the University of Lisbon and doing an internship here in the Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine of the University of Luxembourg. And uh, what I'm here to talk about is about curation of the ADNI data sets. So uh, basically my, my, my work here has been about data analysis, curation and modeling of this ADNI neuroimaging data. Uh, for integration in the, into the Transmart uh, platform. So uh, for starters, I'll, I'm going to um, give you a little background. Uh, in the, uh, I'm working basically mo uh, mostly with uh, Alzheimer's disease, not with Parkinson. And uh, so uh, as most of you might know, uh, is one of the, is the, the most common uh, neuro degenerative disease, uh, so it's really important to like to start working towards and eventually um, slowing down the systems or preventing a neuronal uh, death. So um, it was with that purpose in mind that this uh, ADNI, uh, so it stands for Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative, was started um, in uh, 2004. And uh, it's basically with the main goal to detect uh, Alzheimer's disease at the earliest uh, stage possible and identify ways to track the disease through biomarkers. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you about uh, a little bit about ADNI, so you can uh, you, you can know what I'm talking about, and then I'll I'll tell you uh, how I'm dealing with the curation of, of this data. So the ADNI uh, is divided in three phases. The first one, called the ADNI one, was um, started in 2004, and it was up until 2010. Uh, it had around 800 subjects uh, between normal controls, uh, mild cognitive impairment uh, subjects, so what we call MCI subjects, and 200 uh, with Alzheimer's disease, uh, all between 55 and 90 years old from the US and Canada. And so first the subjects were submitted uh, to the screening uh, with uh, some tests like the mini mental state exam or the clinical dementia rating, so they can uh, they can see in which category these subjects would fall, if it's in the normal controls, or the MCI or the the AD patients, and they are submitting then some clinical and cognitive assessments with MRIs and all, and with this add new one, um, uh, then. Uh, it came the the ADNIGO. The ADNIGO, the, the GO stands for grand opportunity. This was a grand opportunity because they, they figured, okay, if we are doing this and have lots of subjects with MCI, this grand opportunity was to 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 better characterize the MCI. So it, it included some early onset MCI patients and some later onset MCI patients. So it was for around one year and a half. To, to better study these uh, MCI uh, patients. And then it came the ADNI2, it started in 2011 and it, it's still going. Um, it's uh, predicted to, to be finished by next year. And it involved around uh, 1,200 subjects uh, plus all the other, the other ones that were, that were involved on the ADNI1 and the ADNI-GO. So this whole initiative uh, was around like 3,000 subjects. And, okay, and the main goal was to determine the relationships among clinical imaging, genetic and biomedical biomarkers characteristics, observing the e evolution from uh, mild symptoms to MCI to, MCI to um, dementia. So, and this is why this is uh, very important to, to use and um, integrate this, this, this uh, data uh, into the Transmark because it's, it has lots of information. It is one of the biggest ever made. So, so uh, first, of course, I had to, I had to acquire this data. Uh, so I had to ask my, my PI for, for the access. He asked uh, Adney and Loney, which is the laboratory of neuroimaging, they, they have the data and I gain, gain access to the data. What, what you can see here are 
the, the folders uh, where all the clinical files were uh, were. So we have a lot of assessments by specimen, enrollment, genetic, imaging, medical history, study info, subject demographics, test data. So it's a really big, big data set. And once I, I acquired the, the data, I start going through it. And for for someone that is is not fam uh, familiarized with uh, with this project, with this initiative, with all the acronyms and abbreviations, I found it very hard to to uh, to make sense of it, to to understand it. So because I, I always had to to see, okay, uh, what is PTD Morgan? I had to to go to the website and say, okay, PTD Morgan is subject demographics, and the PTDOBYY, for example, would be the patient date of birth year. But if I ha have know that, so I, I had to go check, and this also happens with all the the labels in the in, in the file. So I figured, okay, to try to facilitate, to simplify my my life and the life of other people that might uh, use this data later on, I decided to create some kind of what what I call a clinical data dictionary and some little dictionary so I I went and I I got all the the um, the uh, the meanings of uh, of of these labels and the names and I put it I put them all together first I created uh, what I called the stated data separated with the group subgroup the description of uh, of uh, of what the the file has uh, in, in which phase it was uh, done and the actual file name and the file format. So and this uh, this is a really big list. This is just a, a screenshot of uh, of part of it. So so uh, this this way I can have like all the information, all the files in only one one Excel file. So with really easy access. This would be one example of the of the label dictionary that I, that, I, that I created for the for the labels in this case for the the PD demographics uh, file and so uh, even after organized uh, and curated and all the Transmart doesn't accept uh, all all formats uh, so I mean we have to to have a, a specific column mapping file format too so we can uh, integrate this data on the Transmart. So uh, with that in mind, um, I mean, um, as you can see, so I mean, it's only like uh, four or, or six columns to do it uh, to one clinical file. It's, it's fairly easy to do it manually. Uh, but if you have a data set with uh, thousands and thousands of files, uh, it, it, it gets pretty hard because you have to do it manually and take long uh, and so it's not it's not actually doable if we can say that so my my first idea was to to create uh, I, I used Python for that I created a script that would allow me to to, to make those those format changes uh, automatically and so it can uh, it can be be then integrated in uh, into Transmart. So what my script does is that uh, they they take a fo uh, folder where I put all all the files uh, that I want to integrate into Transmart, and it, um, it 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 will create a column mapping file for every file on that folder, uh, getting the Information about the the data, about the the name of the file and the and the, and the labels uh, from those dictionaries that I created. So and it it goes through every file until there are no more files, and then it stops and give me all the column mapping files. Um, column mapping files that will look like uh, this: the the first column. Uh, with the file name, the second with the category code, so it has a tree organized uh, um, data, and then the column number and the data label. This is uh, one example of what it uh, looked like. It's a, it's a TXT normal file tab separated, and so as you can see here, has the the name of the file where it will get the data, 
followed by the, the, the category code. So this, this uh, data will be under subject characteristics, subject demographics, PT demog, and the meaning of the PT demog is subject demographics, the column and the labels. Uh, so this is what, uh, what my, my script does. So we are, we are now uh, already uh, integrated uh, the, the files and, uh, into the trendmark. Successfully, we still have to make some changes on it, uh, but it's mainly done. And now we are uh, basically I'm uh, now like cleaning the, the data uh, using uh, some other scripts that I'm that I'll, uh, also did. So, for instance, the, in the visit code, uh, if you have BL instead of being of having BL, you have the baseline instead of M6, you have month. Six, so it's more understandable. It would be more user uh, friendly, and uh, and I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, anyone have any questions for any of the speakers? Okay, Venkata, what what will be available? What will be available next week? Uh, for the Loni server, we have the uh, we all the ten studies, PD studies loaded, and we all we are also loaded the same. Even uh, even we have like now sixteen studies, on uh, ten plus six more we uh, PD related studies available on the Etrix public server that is uh, everybody can use. Uh, uh, I can send you the URL. Okay. Maybe you can. Great. Yeah. We can use this server or that server, and uh, other things like I mean, if somebody interested, we can also uh, give some guidance f for this uh, Galaxy setup and the P connecting to other tools like uh, PD Map. Great. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, we have a test server uh, that is accessible only within Luxembourg. Luxembourg, but if somebody interested, we can provide the you know, some guidance or, you know, okay. so great. we'll be there. Three of us will be there and, uh, you know. Yeah, great. All right, we do have a couple questions. Um, Hiroko Dodge from the University of Michigan has a question. Hiroko, uh, I'm unmuting you. Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious, what are data? Is MRI data downloadable at the Transmark? MRI information, and if so, are they categorized already into uh, regions like temporal lobe volumes or you know total volumes, or is that something we are going to create at the um, at the transmart site? Um, just to, if you could give give us some idea what kind of MRI data is available, that's helpful. I mean, for this data set, we load MRI data, and uh, maybe for the other data set have loaded, they can give an answer. Okay, for so the Adoni, we have a data available, MRI data available at the Transmart platform. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Right. Um, Eugene, Michigan from uh, Thomson Reuters, uh, you should be unmuted. Yes, hi. Uh, I just have a question about the uh, expression data for the geo data sets. I was wondering if you just, you know, take them as is from the geo, or you did your own pre-processing and normalization, you know, because if the study comes like, from different groups. They would do different maybe procedures, normalization, different platforms, etc. You just... keep keep the data as close to the raw data as possible because um, you know other people may have different opinion on how to normalize data. So we we keep rather this out of the of the, the current transmart so that we leave it to the analysis. That's our current policy. Okay.
Okay. We do have a question uh, in the text window. Um, I'm curious for the last presentation, have you considered using one of the existing uh, biomedical thesauri instead of creating your own? Sorry, uh, existing what? I didn't understand. An existing um, thesaurus. We're uh, using you know, more standardized terms. Yeah. So, um, I mean, uh, I I first start create my my own because uh, uh, I'm I'm currently uh, on the on this project called uh, Asianomy Project, and uh, we are so we we are uh, both uh, AD and um, PD uh, ontology. So, um, what I tried to, to to create here was uh, first I, I I wanted to to do my my own thing. So uh, I I created this to to, to do it uh, to, to serve the the purpose that I that I the the project that I was uh, doing. So maybe I would like to add uh, one comment like. Uh, this one we are curating here, like uh, uh, the Vasco is curating the ADNI data uh, in the framework of Etionomy. I am my project. Etionomy, they are developing, uh, the goal is like to develop ADPD ontologies there. So like the, 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 uh, this uh, ADNI data will go through this, uh, the ontologies from, uh, maybe you, you guys might know, is Martin Hoffman from Fraunhofer Institute. So these are well-established, uh, uh, fine-grained ontologies. I mean, whenever we, we have any ontologies available, we are we are applying those ontologies. I mean, these are uh, we have a work package in the etionomy. They direct uh, what kind of ontology we should use, and we are employing those things in the curation. I mean, like in the ADNI, I know that Thomson Reuters, uh, you guys curated the data uh, there. Like uh, uh, the time we don't have access to this curated data, we have raw data, and this data is distributed in uh, uh, many files. Even he, Vasco put a lot of effort to harmonize this data, bringing from uh, the hundreds of files. Uh, maybe like we can share. Uh, he's in contact with the ADNI people as well to share these mappings, especially the the. Uh, uh, hundreds of files. Maybe, mm -hmm. we, maybe we can discuss this one during the datathon. Uh, this whatever effort he put should be useful for should be useful to the rest of the community. That is our goal actually. Okay. Let's see. Thomas, would you like to ask a question? I'm unmuting you. Go ahead. The sort of the RNA sample analysis for the for the Parkinson's patients is it whole blood or are these postmortem uh, brain sample analyses? It, it depends on the on the on the um, source of the data. I mean, most of the study when we were curating, they're mostly from postmortem brain. Some of them are cell lines and also blood samples. So it's a, it's a mixture. Is there any way to um, differentiate those when we're, when we're assessing those uh, when we get to Boston next week as to whether it's, it's a cell line source or whether it's um, IPSC source or whether it's the source? Can you, can you speak a little bit louder? Yeah, it's a little hard to hear you, Thomas. You... Yes. Um, is there any way to differentiate the source when we, if, if we decide to, to go into the, to the PD analysis? Uh, is there a way to differentiate the source of the RNA, whether it's a cell line source, an IPSC source, or a postmortem brain source? Um, would be fairly important for me to understand. Yes, this this information was never uh, available on the geo. We have already included into into the I two B two tree, so there 
if, if it's available on Geo, it will be in, um, available also on the Transmart server. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well, I would like to thank uh, our speakers. Um, a lot of interesting data sets there and a lot of, a lot of good work that I think will be really helpful next week. Um, just again to, to remind everyone, the, um, the recordings uh, for these webinars are up on the website as quickly as I can, so hopefully this one will be up there shortly. Uh, I've posted them down at the end of the website. Um, so down here you can see I've got the recordings from yester yesterday's talk as well as the, the training session. Um, and also tomorrow there will be the next, um, the final webinar in preparation and we'll have uh, the talk by Perkin Elmer on Spotfire and by IO Informatics. Uh, uh, and so please, you're, you're invited certainly to come to those. Uh, also as a, a reminder, uh, if you are coming to Boston and like a hotel room, the, the discounted hotel rates, you need to book them by today, by the end of the day. And the information, again, is up on the website. Uh, so uh, please um, please uh, get your rooms. Uh, and if you have any other questions about the webinars or about the, the Datathon, please, uh, please contact us at the Foundation. So again, thank you, everyone. Uh, hopefully this was an enjoyable uh, and very useful presentations. And uh, again, I, I thank the, the guys from uh, University of Luxembourg for some really very uh, important and interesting uh, talks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. And thanks, all.